Good afternoon everybody. Yesterday we started speaking about the four steps, about when a person has to already criticize his wife, what are the four steps he has to go through. And we said that the first step is that a person has to be patient not to react right away. He has to wait for it to cool down a little bit, two, three days. And then second thing we said that you have to uh, pray to Hashem that she should accept it in a lovingly, in a loving way, should not look at it as in a chas shalom judging way. The third way we said that you're supposed to do it in a positive way, that you are bringing it to her, showing that you're trying to help her, and not really that you are trying to help yourself. Even though at the end you're going to benefit from it yourself as well, but the, you're supposed to initiate that you really care for her. That's the third point. The fourth point we spoke about was, he should speak to her in a time whenever it's a relaxed environment. It should not come to the time whenever the kids are bothering her, this one is crying, this one spills something, and she's so upset right now, and you right now coming with your comment about something, that's not going to be the, the proper time to make your point peacefully through. Today, we prepared over here the point of that the wife always have to feel that she is first placed by the husband. Shalom Bayit's success revolves around an important concept of that the wife's knowledge that she is first place in all her husband's list of priorities. If there is priorities to the husband, and anything it's going to be, at your work, at your learning Torah, at your praying, at your gym, at your business, and whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Shalom Bayit's success is... That the wife, first one on priorities on the list is my wife. My wife comes before the business. My wife comes before the children. My wife comes before my parents. My wife comes before my work. My wife comes before the shopping. My wife comes before my friends. My wife comes before everything I have in this world. Who is the first in place in everything I'm doing in my life? Every time the wife has to feel that. Even if you're in your mind, it's really that she's not in the first place, she has to know that. The knowledge that she has, my husband puts me in priorities. First one in his priorities list, list of priorities. It says the husband should find every way to make her feel that she is first place. When she speaks, he has to give her 100% attention. Sometimes a person is listening to his wife. He's be'emed listening to her. But the way he's presenting it is as he's doing something at the same time. So if, you, if she will ask him, what did I say? He will tell her every detail. If Ahmed was listening. But she feels that you're not 100% with her. So I said, that Rabotai hurts her essence that she feels I'm not your first place. I'm not in your, in your the first place in the list of priorities. That's one, uh, one of the ways that you can present that you really care for her. She is number one in your life, is whenever she speaks to you, you give her 100% of your attention. The next point is, whenever she needs something, you jump on the opportunity, opportunity and you are doing it happily. Then the, the third point saying over here is, throughout the day, it's important that you should contact her via call, it's better obviously than text message, but if impossible, she is busy, she cannot pick up, so you also can do it through an email or text, letting her know that throughout the day you were thinking about her. You have to tell her, Jonam, today I was thinking about you, about this, about that. She has to hear that the husband is thinking about her, more than he's thinking about the boss, more than he's thinking about the business, more than he's thinking about his learning Torah, more than he's thinking about his tefillah, more than he's thinking about the children. Who is the husband, the wife, have to feel that she, he's thinking about the most? About her. Many times we are doing good job with the wife until children are coming up. When the children are coming up, the priority of the husband became the children. The wife could wait. What? My grandmother, uh, my grandmother didn't expect so many things from her, my grandfather. But I don't think that your wife could behave as your grandmother behaved with her husband. The generation is different. The exposure and the temptations that the women has today, it's totally different than your grandmother had back in the day. That's why don't expect that and don't compare your grandma's life and her lifestyle to your wife's lifestyle, to nowadays. 
The fourth point is, come home with a big smile and show her that this is the most important part of your day. What's the most important part of the day? Whenever I'm going to come and see my wife. She has to feel that you were waiting for this moment all day long. About it could be two, three minutes that you were at home, but you made her feel that you gave all your life to her. That's, that's the moment of truth when you're coming home. You know, when the, whenever the hatan breaks the, the cup under the chupa, the rabbi puts such a pressure on him, make sure you break the, the cup on the first time. If you're breaking it on the second time, it shows that you're going to get married second time. It's, it's, woo, you know, this hatan is almost exploding. Not the cup, he's about to explode from so much pressure he puts on him. Why? This is the moment of truth. You have to break the cup the first time. Why, why, why? He puts so much pressure on him. I have heard that so many times that the hatan is like this whenever he's breaking the cup. Make sure he's going to get it from the first time. One time you almost got the rabbi's leg from so, much, so many words <laughs> instead of getting the cup. So the moment of truth when you come home is what type of approach you give your wife at that moment. Ah, how are you? Ah, how are you? It's okay. Like I saw somebody else on the street. Hi, how are you? I see you. Ah, hi, how are you? No. You're supposed to come, he says, with a, with a feeling that she has to feel the most, part, the most important part of your day was that meeting, that whenever you're going to see her at nighttime, whenever you are meeting her. And, this, and the fifth point is, this feeling of first place makes her feel incredible joy, strength, and she is ready to give back ten times more. So who is really getting a benefit out of this at the end? The husband. The fact that she feels that you are 100% loyal to her, that in, the, in a way what? In a way that she is number one in your life. So I told you the other time when somebody picked up the phone when his wife was calling when he was learning Torah. How did he pick up the phone? He didn't want to interrupt the class for too long. So he picked up the phone. He thought I did the right thing. He picks up the phone. I'm learning. He didn't want to interrupt the rabbi. He didn't want to interrupt the guy. So he said the point. I'm learning. Bye. Now what the wife feels whenever this happens right now? I'm learning. What is, what is your first, what's, your, what's in your first place? Learning Torah. What did we say she has to feel first place? She is number one. And we're going to see later on that Rabbi Abu says any time that the wife will feel anything else, number one, besides her, that thing is going to be number one target for her to break you, take you away from that. So sometimes a person says, Rabbi, my wife learned in yeshiva. Her father is a rabbi. Her grandfather is a domro kalon. How come she tell me, don't, don't go go to learn Torah? How she's going to get Gan Eden, Rabbi? The Gemara, didn't the Gemara say that she gets Gan Eden only when I go to learn Torah? <coughs> yes, the Gemara does say that. In Basakat Brahon, Daf Yudzai, the Gemara says, how women get Olam Abba? By the husbands and the children going to learn Torah. But in order for you to have her sending you to the Torah classes, you have to make her feel, Jonam, you know, me and you are one neshama. We, we have to go learn Torah. But the Hashem said that this is my responsibility. So you are my really, my priority is you. You are in my first place of my list of priorities is you. But in order for us to get Olam Abba, the rabbi said I have to come to learn Torah. So I'm only going there, not because I want to have an excuse to run out of you. To run out of sitting with you at home. Not because the rabbi made me go, because then the rabbi is going to be the target. Any time that you will feel there is somebody more important in your life than her, that thing, that person, that matter is going to be the next target that she's going to make sure you're not going to be involved in it anymore. So that's why it says, so it says Rabbi Arush, those five points over here, Rabotai. Review this. Today we put you a microphone over here so you can hear very well every point. Review that. And I'm telling you, the more you will review that, the more Hashem is going to give you Shalom Bayit. And whenever you have Shalom Bayit, you have Parnasat Tova, you have healthy children, you have healthy, healthy bodies for both of you. All depends on the points that you're going to review. And Bazat Hashem is going to implement. And we're all going to be blessed with Shalom Bayit. Baruch Adonai Olam.